I'm dead. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's sorry says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be a part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. You, so we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Fire merch. Ready for the next song? Um, Is it Rest in Peace? Rest in Peace by the band Extreme. Our DJ for the night, DJ 7 Dusted, said just in case that's, that wasn't enough to convince you of who, why... Is it Nuno? Yeah. Is on my rush more of guitarists. Here's another live song. This one comes from their third album and uh, three sides to every story. This is for all the armchair activists out there. I consider myself to be one of those up to this point in my life. This is about to change drastically, which I will get into more later in the night. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. This is about, to, uh, wait a minute. Uh, I'd encourage all that believe strongly about an issue to turn off the laptop and phone and take a fucking stand. Otherwise, what you're doing is riding the fence. Uh-oh. All right. Uh-oh. <laughs> that sounds like we got some masculinity coming through. <laughs> that sounds like some masculinity to me. Here we go. Rest in peace by extreme. Let's do this shit.
hard ball. That hat that has very freaking nineties, bro. Extreme SGS. Rock and roll, ladies and gents. Mm -hmm. That is Rest in Peace by yep. the band Extreme. Extreme. Uh, okay, right. read read again what seven what the song meant to Seven real quick. Just in case that wasn't enough to convince you of why Nuno is my favorite Mount Rushmore of guitarists, here's another live song. This one comes from their third album, Three Sides to Every Story. This is for all the armchair activists out there. I consider myself to be one of those up to this point in my life. This is about to change drastically, which I will get into more later in the night. I encourage all that believe strongly about an issue to turn off the laptop and phone and take a fucking stand. Otherwise, what you're really doing is just riding the fence. That's what our DJ Seven Dusted said. Um, yeah, yeah. Do do what you will with that, dear listener. The man has spoken. Yeah, the matter is yeah. completely settled. Um, so, yeah, I, I obviously 100,000% agree. Oh, absolutely. So it, it's, the song says, let's talk of peace. Sounds so cliche. I, I just have to say the riff in there, it it had like a smooth, you said that it was hard. And I, I think that it's interesting because there are some times where I experience a riff in a sort of, I know this is an old word, but it feels kind of like groovy to me. Like I kind of feel like I'm in the, the groove of it and it like flows and it kind of has a I don't know how else to explain it besides that word but that word is so old and it doesn't go with riffs but I hope you understand what I'm saying um but that that's how I'll experience it and you were experiencing it as just hard like to me there's like hard riffs and then there's like whoa yeah that's kind of like smooth in there too like some groovy in with the hardness mm -hmm. um so I liked the I liked it 
So he says, let's talk of peace. Sounds so cliche, a novelty, catchphrase of the day, middle index, sign of the time, just as complex as water too. Someone said, give peace a chance. And that's all that we're saying while we're sitting on the fence pretending our hearts are in the right place, but your face shows a trace of hypocrisy. Don't tread on me. Now you can see. Okay, so we're talking in the song, uh, Make Love Not War. So, okay, what I understood this song to be was the person was saying, like, let's let's try to give peace a chance. Like, there's there's so much. Let's not pretend to justify, rather amend, where treasures lie. Straight through your heart, peace can be found. That's where you start, not all around. Start with yourself. Yeah, you gotta you gotta create okay, peace yeah. within yourself because you you're not right. gonna be able to bring peace to the world. Right. If you're if you if you don't have that peace inside of yourself. Right. Um. Yeah, that's one hundred percent true. And if, if you look at what Seven said at the beginning, it's it's just about like people who complain, but they don't do anything material to change the situation. So. This is one of the things that's that that is one of the death knells of progressivism, for example, is that you know in 2020 when it was Bernie versus uh, Biden, mm -hmm. and you had the Carolinas, which were going to be huge voting blocks. The young people did not show up to vote for Bernie; they just didn't show. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of like real idealism as there always is with young people. Mm -hmm. But depending on what generation you're in, you're going to be um, more or less active. So, for example, in the 60s and 70s, young people were, I mean, activists. Everybody was an activist. It was yeah, an anti-war right, situation. Right, 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 yeah. And if you, were in the, if you were part of the cool kids, you were anti-war, whatever. It mm -hmm. almost became like a cultural thing, not even like something that people truly believed in. Mm -hmm. Folks just didn't want to go to Vietnam for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. So, like... And then in the, the, the 80s, 90s, it was kind of like a cynicism. Like, nobody believed in anything anymore. Like, in the 90s, everything was like, just be cool. There was sort of like this disinterested thing in the 90s about, like, what people's views were. In the 90s, it was just kind of like, hey, as long as you don't shove your thing down my throat, I'm fine. You go over there, I'll be over here. Everything is cool. Just stay where you are. Mm -hmm. And now, now it's like, it's crazy. Like, you have to believe what I believe or you're a horrible, nasty, rotten fascist. You should die, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, that, that yeah. like, laid back attitude. So, so like, extreme. this song was kind of written during the time when it was kind of like, it's cool to talk about things. Like, it makes you look woke, whatever you want to call it. I mean, whatever people want to call it. Like, it, it's... It makes you look like you know what you're talking about, but then you're not doing anything on the, on, you know, to talk. So you're just talking just to talk. And you're not doing anything to actually bring about change. Yeah. And you're, you're on a, you're on a, you're on a message board, you know, making a stand on a message board and you're pontificating about, you know, whatever, but then you don't understand what, like, what's like, like, so for example, it's like people can get mad about this, but like defund the police. Mm -hmm. That's crazy talk. That's insane. I, I, I agree. Like I understand where people are coming from because there's so much craziness going on. But I mean, I I would I would venture to say that if you took every interaction that there was with cops, every single one, and you had all of them, and you said, okay, how many of the interactions were bad? How many of those interactions were deadly? How many of those interactions were actually good? Like I think that you probably are going to have the majority of those where the cop really did something good to save people. But at the same time, we can't overlook them killing people when they're supposed to be out there, you know, killing people that don't even like they make a mistake, invade somebody's house and kill the person. It's like, this is insane. Like shit's out of control. Yeah. But that's, that's where like understanding, like once you actually get into an activist space, you start understanding what, what is actually possible and practical and feasible. So for example, if you're talking with the cops, the easiest thing to do would be to, to lift qualified immunity right like so right right so we're not going to give you guys qualified immunity so you're going to have to stay in trial like a regular citizen right. if you kill somebody right qualified okay. immunity basically makes it so that way when they anything that they do wrong on the job basically gets them off the hook for it. so they're not going to do any time for it or anything right so people are making a lot more mistakes 
You know, you would be, you would reserve your, 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 your gunfire a lot more if you were like, Ooh, if I'm making a mistake, I could go to jail for this. You would double check, right? Which right. is crazy that people would double check if they were going to go to jail, but they won't double check if they're going to kill somebody. Right. It's insane. Honey, look at the cord. It's, it's in the back of the door. That's, it's going to be pushed down to the ground. That's why it's sticking. Thank you. Just put it under the door. It's a little, you'll, you'll get it. Just wiggle it back and forth and like a seesaw, like a, like a saw. Um, yeah, so situations like that make it, you know, I, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I find, like, I, I just recently joined Twitter, and um, <laughs> I'm not sure what I f think about the place. I, it's hard, it's a kind of a hard platform, I think, because, like, Facebook, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get your friends and what they're posting. Mm -hmm. But with Twitter, you're getting everything so you might see somebody getting beat up you might see some horrible thing you might see something really great you might see people like really fighting for their cause like it really and, and it's just like yeah but that's that's the thing is like you you have you have real practical no, things Delaney, that you could do. i don't believe they would go to jail for shooting active shooters They're, they would go to j they uh no that's for like when they're doing something wrong oh, we're just force. talking about justifying your rounds just like in the military like right. you're told you know before you go on an op i mean especially depending on what what mission profile is like the jag lawyers will talk to you before and after you go out yeah like right so the, the, these are these are soldiers yeah, i've heard you have to Jesus, every bullet you shoot i've heard you, you have you're to accountable go. for every yeah. single round like that that's drilled into your mind so right. like you know uh, combat dudes in combat have to justify every yeah. Round so that they why fire. shouldn't cops have to do that? Right, yeah. like it, it, you if, know, if it's justifiable, fine. But let the courts decide. But the response, the response of saying let's defund the police, it's just crazy. Like that, that's that's crazy talk. Like it's, it really it's an and, extreme reaction to pain, though. And, and the, the other side of it is too, just on a practical level, like a lot of these guys need updated training in discriminatory fire. They need training in how to handle stress and, and de-escalate their own stress. Yeah, yeah, you know, for like, sure. Because a lot of people talk about de-escalation tactics and like what people don't realize, like the very, the most important person to de-escalate in any of those situations when they're about to get kinetic is yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, so like, yeah. so, so, so like the reaction of like, yo, defund the police is actually, no, like we need to give them more money because they need more training. We need to allocate resources, more resources toward training and care for the for the, for the officers because one of the things that are not being talked about is these dudes are getting overworked. They're yes. completely overworked. The economy is fucking with them just like everybody else. Yep. And they're, they they get in these high stress situations. You're more likely. And your life is on the line when you go to work. It's not like a bank job where you're like, oh, there could be a bank robber today, but most likely not. Sadak. Like you're a cop. Like this could be the day you don't come home. And you're exposed as part of your job to the darkest <sighs> parts of the human mind. So that's so true. there's that's, other that's things. True. So it's gonna it's gonna create a certain kind that's of mentality true. when you start engaging with criminals. Yeah. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, that's true. So, like, like it, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty. But like I said, like, people love to talk about it. They like to, you know, they like to, you know, it's anytime there's like a shooting or something like that, they love it because it gets you all the attention. You know, everybody knows now the BLM folks where it was like a, just a straight racket. They basically mm -hmm. got themselves rich off of. They basically said like. We took advantage of people's white guilt or whatever. It was just like it was just so disgusting, Who's horrible. The, the the leaders of BLM they basically said that they enriched themselves off of people's white guilt or whatever. It was just like completely, but it's shit like that to where it's like it, it's you have to call that out. Mm -hmm. You have to because mm -hmm. because now like the you know everybody else is like on looking and saying you guys are crazy. Yeah, and the, you saying? know what really stinks about that. And, and I agree, both communities need to call it out, yours and mine, because your people have to call it out to say, hey, we're not with this, because otherwise it's just going to create another one of those situations where white people would be like, oh. Yeah. So you don't really believe in the movement. You just wanted money. Mm hmm Yeah, I know. And I don't know, you know, Amy, maybe he was trolling, but uh, Matthew said, my best friend who's an atheist gave us 500 that we... That 
uh, he needed to help us get to 2K. Yet so many Christians I know have failed us. What the fuck? Um, I think that it, I don't know your, your particular situation, but I do know, like, people see us as Christians. And so, um, people ask us for money all the time. Like, it's like a constant thing. And, you know, we, there's, there's only so much to go around and we've got seven kids, you know what I mean? So like, I don't know what that person's situation is. So it's, it's a little bit tough to just be like, oh, Christians didn't give because it could be that those Christians are already giving in a lot of other areas. Um, so it, it, you don't know, you know, um, you don't know the situation. Secondly, nobody is obligated to give to anybody else. Um, we could, we can celebrate the fact that people did okay. give, but <laughs> to have that sort of attitude hey, about look, it, look, look, look. what did I miss something? <laughs> what? We'll talk about it later. <laughs> we'll talk offline. Oh. Well, then that was so interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, there's um, your answer. <laughs> and, and look, this seems to be universal. Like, here's, uh, I'm pretty sure Amor lives in um, the UK. Theresa May as Home Secretary cut the London police force by more than 20,000. Six years later, things are a real mess. So it's like, oh, we don't need... We don't, it's the same thing with the military funding. Like, I, I, I don't think we need to cut the military budget. If we just reallocated shit to, to be uh, a people first thing instead of spending billions of dollars on experimental shit. Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of things that, that can be done, you know. But again, like, that's the problem with activism. It's like, the activism is more based on emotion. This kind of event happened. George Floyd happened. Therefore, we mm -hmm. need to defund the police. And it's mm -hmm. like, you know, it, it's it, it's the same thing where it was like it, a similar thing happened relative to the George Floyd, you know, That's riots, so uprising, extreme. whatever you want to whatever you want to call it. You know, people were asking me, like, what what do you think of this? And I'm like, well, I'm not going to say that violence is never appropriate. Because I'm an American, and so that's how we established the country, was, was violence against the government. Mm -hmm. But I said, if you look at what happened with the Founding Fathers, they had a list of grievances. Like, mm -hmm. they were not just wrecking, I mean, they were wrecking shop, and they were destroying people's, they were destroying public property and private property alike. But they had a list of very well-articulated grievances. They could say, this is a problem, this is a problem, this is a problem. These are the proposed fixes that we are willing... These are the terms we're willing to accept. So they had all that shit. Then they did all the, the crazy shit. Mm -hmm. But they had already already been in conversation and they already talked and decided what issues they were going to center. Mm -hmm. So when you look back at the George Floyd situation, there was a lot of emotion. There was a lot of destruction, mm -hmm. depending on whoever you want to call it. But there were, there were no demands. So nothing happened. You know, Pelosi did the little yeah. dashiki thing, but th be because it was led up by the, honestly, miscreants of Black Lives Matter, because those two were the leaders of the entire movement, those girls were completely corrupt. And, you know, what, there was there was one clip, there was one clip where they're like, we're trained Marxist or whatever. And then, of mm. course, Tucker and the rest of those blew that up. But like, mm. I wish they would have operated like Marxists. They operated like complete capitalists. Once they got their money, they didn't give a fuck about anything. You see what I'm saying? That's so And then bad. the people on the ground, like, it takes people... That's the, so selfish. It takes people on the ground so long to catch up to that shit that the opposition is like, you guys are... You, yeah. you see what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, yeah. And the other thing, too, is like, look, I'm white. <laughs> and I and obviously, I've staked in the game to be like, oh, Black Lives Matter and all that stuff, obviously. I mean, aside from the fact that we're Christian, so I believe that everybody's life matters. And yes, I include everybody. Right. Um, but I, I think that... Uh, oh, when, when they do stuff like that, then it's like, you know, because I, I went to bat for the BLM movement with my white folks, right, my right, white right. friends and family. Right. And then it turns out that they did all that. I'm like, yo. Right. Because now all that stuff that I was like, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then turns out that they were just being corrupt about it. It's like they had that platform. They had that that's why fair, funding. Uh, that's fair, they I, had, that's why they had attention. Said, like, that's why Farrakhan said, we will handle you the way any nation handles its traitors. Like, it's that level of a crime. But, but like, that's what's happened now is like there, there's an industry on this shit. It's the same thing with the with the life discussion. Like 
we we've talked over and over again about how pro life organizations have have blocked anti abortion legislation. Yeah, that's right. Because, yeah, I couldn't believe it when Vinny yeah, told me yeah, that. Yeah, because there's a fiduciary motive for that. Because that is so sick. You can sell shirts. You can you can speak at churches. There's an entire circuit where if you get if you can align yourself or position yourself as like a spokesman or whatever, you can. There's an entire circuit of things that you can do, and there's merch and all the rest of it. You you know that's they, so disgusting. A lot of people in the pro life movement has simply monetized the 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 national tragedy that that I couldn't that is. believe it when you first told me that I, it was it was unbelievable was to be that, honest with you I forgot about it because I didn't Tom remember Tom dude it. who was running for president over yeah. there in whatever oh, he's the one that said it well he was he was at the the local uh, uh, Senate Judiciary whatever whatever and he was like yeah it was a pro lifer that squashed the bill like they were he was there see what I'm saying so like. That's the other side of it. Is like you got to understand, like everything is an industry. Mm-hmm. So if you're if you if you have a social issue that's important to you, you just have to understand, like you live in an environment where there is nothing sacred and everything will be monetized. Wow. And you just watch those people. Like I I had a you know our son was working for the GOP over you know for the midterms over you know last year or whatever. And they explicitly stated, like, yo, we're not addressing abortion. Like, mm-hmm. we don't care about that. You know, I mean, they didn't use those words. But, I mean, that was essentially. So that's what happens. Like, it, it takes the, 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 the guys at the top or the girls at the top know that they're corrupt. You see what I'm saying? But the people that are following them don't know that until it's, like. Too late. Right. And then you've got people in the side going, yo, these people are, they're not real. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? It, it like, completely destroys everything. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of where we're at right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, people being able to think critically about these topics, it's it's been completely suspended. And now, the only real issue that people are using to determine whether or not something is true or not when they look at the media and then what they're going to do about it in response is whether or not that particular voice box belongs to my particular tribe. It doesn't really matter what the guy is saying. Yeah, that that is true. I've noticed that. All that matters is that he or she is on my team. Yep. And it, and and they're saying whatever we're saying. Okay, we're good. That that that's but, that's as far as we're gonna go. You know, I'm gonna bring the 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 Nazi discussion always keeps coming up. But like, there were people in that movement that they were a part of it. What? I I just like slipped off because there's so much I'm thinking about on this topic. Um. Anyway, go go ahead, go ahead, because I I forgot where I was gonna go with that. No, I mean it, it's just that's just kind of that that's kind of where it is. It's it's kind of like there's all these clichés, you're talking about peace or whatever, but a you're not really doing anything. You're too lazy to even vote. And then on the other side is that the people that want to manipulate you are are quicker than you to the draw on a lot of this stuff. And a lot of people like project their goodness onto everybody else. Like a lot of people cannot imagine like taking a tragedy like Breonna Taylor or taking a tragedy like George Floyd to enrich yourself over it. Oh, my God. Like, most people cannot imagine being that level of a grimy individual. And so it, it becomes very hard for you to see what's happening, like, right in front of you because it's just you would never think that somebody could be that devious mm-hmm. and sacrilegious. But that's where we are. Yeah, a lot of times we look at other people and we assume they're like us in the good things and the bad things that they would be capable of. So, you know, sometimes when we accuse other people, we're, we're actually telling on ourselves. And sometimes when we're, look, we're like, oh, that, they would never do something like that. It's really because it's how we are. And it is hard to believe that somebody would take those situations yeah. and, and enrich themselves off of it. But the but, way the founders constructed our government, it was really like each individual citizen has their own responsibility to make the thing work. And mm-hmm. back in the day, like at the very beginning, everybody had that understanding. Mm-hmm. But now it's like we're all divided and, and people don't, people don't have, you know, that whole like ask not what your country can do for you, you know, but what you can do for your country, eh, it's corny or whatever. But like, there's no voice like that anymore in, in the country. There's no voice saying like, you know, let's but, do this for America. Like mm-hmm. the, the the value of the individual is is our ability to contribute to the collective. Like there's there's none of that anymore. Mm-hmm. There's no voice saying that. And yeah. I, I you know, corny as it may sound, I, I just think that that's still 
that still should be the posture. But now mm-hmm. we've got all this entitlement. Like, we feel the country's supposed to do everything for us. We're not supposed to do anything for our country. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Go ahead. What are you saying? Yeah, I think that maybe we, we, we don't see people as individuals anymore. We've just... That's part of the reason why I have such an... That, that's the issue that I'm seeing with Twitter is that it, it's all... It looks to me like... And I've only been on there for like four or five days. So if my judgment is off on it, I apologize. <laughs> but it looks to me like it's it's a bunch of groups that are putting out their agenda and then they inter, they fight within... Like the different groups will fight against each other in their comment section. Yeah. And it doesn't really seem like that we're actually getting anywhere. It just seems like it's... Everybody's trying to just be right. But with... But but it seems like people are trying to be right for the sake of being right, not for the sake of knowing they have the truth. And that's the problem. Yeah, I mean, you know, there, there's a dude, and, you know, I, I, I didn't touch it. I'm not really touching a lot of it. But, you know, there's a dude that apparently dude was acting up, acting crazy on the train. And, uh, you know, this Marine dude got him in a rear naked choke. And he killed him. And he died. And so it's like, now the narrative is this Marine is a, is a, you know, this, he, he got this dude lynched. He lynched this guy, blah, blah, blah. Like I've been on the trains in New York city. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I understand exactly what happened in that situation. There's always crazy folks on the, when I went to, there was always people that were like off. Yeah, like, and like and, and like people get really, really reckless on there, and 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 what people don't understand is like situations can change for you very, very quickly. Like the the the, the situation can go from a funny, weird guy on a train to something like kinetic, real, real quick, especially in the city. You got so much shit going on that a lot of things can happen to you, and you don't understand what's happening. So there's there's a lot of like decisions that get made in that environment where people who are not part of that environment don't understand. Mm -hmm. So like, I, I, you know, people were saying like, yo, there were multiple people on dude, including a black, there's another, there was a black guy on dude as well, like trying to like get him to stop. And Mm -hmm. so it wasn't like this white dude just like, I'm going to lynch me. You know what I'm saying? That's not what happened. This dude was acting reckless on the train. Somebody got him a position. A dude wouldn't submit. He kept fighting. There were three or four other people on it. I mean, you know, it, it, it turned out bad. Like I, like I said, like I'm not really, I'm not looking at the particulars because I'm, I'm, you know, I do that for the sake of my mental health. But the point of all that is just simply to say, like, there it is. So now you go to Twitter and you're hearing black dude gets lynched and then they have a screenshot of this guy getting choked out, you know, and his eyes on the back of his head. And then now you're all like, turned up emotionally and so then you got bad actors that like jump on these cultural moments and find ways to monetize Mm -hmm. it while the people on the ground are like really really getting Mm are self-radicalizing you know what i'm saying so it's like it's just a really crazy situation somebody could be you know and 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 of course there's no nuance because you got one group of people saying fuck them the guy had 44 counts of Mm -hmm. criminal whatever like fuck them that that's great you had other people that are like yeah, that's not the point. No. Like, but there's no middle ground. Yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. Everybody's it's like, it's either the guy was like a horrible thug who deserved to die, or the white dude lynched him. Like that. Those are the those are the only two options. There's no other options. It's like, but everybody, everybody that that that's actually ridden the train. Like this is this this types of shit happens. It just so happens that you know. You know, it happens. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a reason that there's a ref in the UFC. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because they know yeah. it doesn't really take long to take somebody's life yeah. in that situation. Yeah, I was thinking about. Um, yeah, if you guys, if you guys want to go on my Twitter, then it would. It's the opposite of what his is. So his is Vin. Sorry, I'm sorry, Vin. <laughs> um, and there's some numbers after mine. I don't know if that's significant or not. You probably can find with just doing sorry, Vin. Yeah. Um, but anyway. Um, Yeah, I I was thinking about how um, everything is, and I I was like, wait a minute, I wonder if if we almost would have to go backwards from where we were. Um, So in other words, if we went back to the time of like the judges, so like a judge is someone that the community has deemed unbiased. Um, I find you to be a very unbiased person. I know that looks like I'm just tooting Vince Horn, but really... 
I, I've always said that, that I felt that, that you could be a judge because um, I've seen Vin um, in a situation where it's one of our kids and one of the neighborhood kids. And I was like, my default, like three years ago was like, my kids are always right. And those mm. kids are going to be wrong. Um, but I saw you in a situation talking to two and, and you were able to look at that situation and hear from both parties and your own kid was putting out some emotion and frustration and whatever. And you were able to overlook that emotion and see the facts and see what was actually happening in the situation. And our kid was wrong. It happened in that situation. Our kid was wrong. Mm -hmm. And you said it and you said it in front of the other kid with our kid, you know what I mean? Like the, the whole situation I thought was really handled really, really well. And that, that kid felt cared for. I mean, yeah. And so I just think, I just wonder like if, if the different groups, if you had your like main speakers and they would come in a room to speak and there's like a judge in there to, because what happens is we have extremes and we have to come to the middle and we have to find the balance. So it's about bringing all of our information to the table and we have to find out where like sometimes we make decisions or we believe policy should be a certain way because we've been traumatized by somebody else's sin. So we might think that something ha like the defund the police thing. So you've been traumatized because some shit the police have done. But what about the other people that are like, I wasn't traumatized or I am less traumatized because a cop showed up. We got to hear from both. And then if you hear from both and you hear testimonies from both, you might come to the conclusion they've saved that we my, can't they, defund saved, them. I mean, they, I, I'm still here. I mean, you know, there are a couple situations. If that DT wasn't on that train, you and wouldn't... I'm very grateful also for the work of some of the policemen. I wouldn't be here. <laughs> it's just a fact. Yeah. Uh, what do you get this song? Uh, nine. I give this one a nine dot three. It was brave as hell to do that. The metal community, man, that's that's stirring up a that's stirring up, up a hornet's nest. So shout out to them for having the cojones to do that. Um, All right. We are coming back on the other side of the break, dear listener. You shall see. We got another band coming up next. Probably a band you've never heard of before. Vin out. Story out. Go.